back from the break, everyone. Now, the session starts with dealing with toxic personalities with Thomas Huatel. Okay, hello guys. So, my talk will be mostly focusing about explaining why toxic people in your project are harming it. And maybe I will show some suggestions what to do, how to do it. And also, I will provide some information what what exactly can happen to your project if you let it overrun by such people. So, firstly, who I am? I am SUSE employee for two years now. Uh, I worked in QA maintenance, which is a team which handles maintenance updates for SUSE Linux Enterprise. And recently I moved to OpenSUSE team, where I will try to make OpenSUSE funny for everyone and funny and useful for everyone. Uh, I also package LibreOffice for OpenSUSE and Gentoo. And apart from that, for OpenSUSE, I package, for example, ISDS libraries, uh, which is tool for Czech e-government communication, where we can communicate with our police and similar stuff. Also, I'm volunteer in OpenSUSE on some tasks and things. And I am a Gentoo developer for five years now. And I am in Gentoo Council which is a head, something like OpenSUSE board, which every one of you knows. Exactly the same, seven people, but we have different tasks. And I am in there since 2010. So firstly, to identify uh, toxic people, we need to look on how our contribution process is done. We have this cycle. A contributor usually creates some content. For such content, he gains a re reputation. And when people see that your project and the content gets some reputation, uh, it attracts more contributors because they think it's cool to work on your project. If any of these equations is not working well, you are losing people because, for example, if uh, you are rough on newcomers, uh, they won't create any content and thus there won't be no extra reputation for your project and no newcomers. Simply you will cut yourself in a small bubble where you are developing for yourself and you get no approach there. So, what is actual toxic people? Toxic person. What, what he can do? So, toxic person usually uses personal attacks and insults uh, well in uh, technical discussions. For example, you are uh, discussing about uh, problems and the guy can't avoid vulgarisms. Uh, not directly like when he, even if he describes some technology, he can't avoid himself to be root and well you all can imagine some uh, rough words for example for system D when anybody mentions these topics uh, all the internet goes haywire and everybody insults system D without actually providing the rational effort uh, there are also critics of system D which are which is not toxic person those are the guys who actually take the time and re reply and in a manner where they describe the problem that system D has, and maybe even suggest what it could be done differently. Not just say system D sucks, and other even meaner words, of course. Uh, mostly, uh, when you have a toxic person, they attack the less empowered in the project than they themselves are. For example, you have a, well, uh, some core library contributor, and he usually can focus on newcomers or people doing uh, small work, which is also nice and important, but because he feels that he is the core guy, he can do whatever he wants and just insults them uh, by w whether diminishing their commits or just mocking them for what they've done. Uh, I've seen this website where uh, uh, developers usually post, not uh, daily with the fur, but uh, more uh, code snippets of somebody else's code with the name of the committer, and they just mock the guy for doing rookie's mix mistakes, and they never even checked, for example, if the guy is new into the business, or it's his first commit, second commit. So rather than helping the guy, explaining his faults, they just laugh at the mistakes the guy did. People are usually demotivated when they have to work with toxic people, because they have to deal with all the insults, for example, or just uh, the mocking and not everybody can like it and even if you ignore it 
it's taking your time because you have to read it and parse it in your brain what the hell is he trying to say with with this uh, also uh, being toxic is, doesn't mean that you can't have a bad day sometimes everybody has a shitty day and so you basically have to look if it happens often of course even if you have a bad day somebody should tell you okay sh you should take a day rest or just wait a bit rather try not to communicate with others for today because you have a really bad day but if this bad day is continuing for one or two months then something is systematic and it's not a just bad day it's you so on the other hand let's take a look who is a not toxic person as we said with the system the example it's simply not somebody who doesn't disagree doesn't agree with you I on technical level or even well, on personal, it's a bit questionable, but on technical level, if somebody doesn't agree with you, it doesn't mean he wants to ruin you and your project. He simply just don't agree with you. So, if you have a toxic person in your project, uh, how hard do you think it is to redeem the credit? So, if somebody, let's say you have a newcomer, so you ask some company to join your project, and those guys came, and somebody, first thing they see is they get insulted. So how many good actions it needs to repay this issue? Any suggestions? Number, one to 10? Seven. Seven? It's in the array, yes, seven is good. But basically it's up and more. So it's not like when somebody insults some guy and you just came, came by and apologized once, it usually doesn't work. The person understands you, but the level of contribution is still not the same. So you need to figure out five things how to make him happier, the guy who was insulted. So what is the actual outcome of having toxic person in your project? Uh, let's take a look on some percentages. So this is really ugly slide. So what's happened to the person which was targeted by somebody who is really toxic for the project? 78% uh, of guys who replied to the anonymous survey which was done in the US actually became less committed to your project, uh, stopped working in some area where the guy is or whatsoever, but they committed less content into your project. That's not good. Uh, they also decreased quality of contributions because they didn't want to deal with the guy, so they just rushed their fixes to have it working for them, for example, but ignored the cash cats, and it was not up and well. 63% uh, of the targeted persons actually uh, loses a lot of time avoiding to meeting, meet the person which insulted them. For example, you have some team that handles security, and if the guy from the security insults some guy, then the guy then spends a lot of time to avoid the security at all, completely. And 80% of the targeted persons actually loses a lot of time worrying about the project future and his future in the project, so he wonders what will happen if this and that, instead of doing something fancy and cool, he just wor worries about what's going to happen to me. Then, 25% of the people which were insulted quits completely, just drops out from the project. What's even worse, 25% of the people who witnessed such actions also decides to quit from your project. So you are losing a lot of people by keeping somebody who is insulted think around. What happens to your project? This is what happens to the target. So what's with the project? What's with the project? Uh, there is reduced cooperation between the developers. So, for example, if the security is pain, pain to work with, people rather don't cooperate with them and just play on their play, playground. For example, don't report CVs, whatso whatsoever is needed in that area. If somebody annoying is in, I don't know, glibc, People just avoid glibc, try to fork it, think work, work around. Also, it diminish uh, reputation of your project for upstreams or outer projects because they simply feel that they are not welcome in your project, so they 
uh, that I do, avoid you. Basically, if you have a rude people in your project, uh, you rather attract more of those because they see that's a perfect behavior. Uh, actually, you are not attracting tox toxic people. You can even attract people who are prone to such behavior if they see it's acceptable. So even somebody who would behave perfectly well in some de well-defined maintenance of good behavior, if he sees that this is possible to do in this project, well, then he will do it because nobody's forcing it out of it. And mostly, you will alienate all the women around because they really avoid rude environments. Uh, not just by insults, but we as guys, we try to interact with each other and we don't mind if we argue on technical level, we can argue and insult each other and it's perfectly fine. But women tend to avoid fight, so they rather do something else than to fight. Which simply, if you have toxic person in your project, means no women for you. So, how to protect people and your project? You have to mm, fix multiple areas in the protection of the project and people, from recruitment process to reaction for the bad actions and similar. So first is fixing your recruiting process. Basically, most distributions have recruitment process uh, that ensures that the developers have uh, good technical skills. For example, we in Gentoo have a huge quizzes that developer has to fill to show up. He's up par with technical standards, like he understands bash, he understands regular expressions, things trivial, things like that. But basically, it ensures only that they are good in good hackers. It doesn't say anything about the personality. It's up to the mentor to decide whether the guy is really lunatic insane that should be handled by some pr wall protection, like, okay, we let you to contribute, but you can do it directly because you are too too crazy for our ideas, or just let him in. But, so you have to think up about social skills by having the mentors or something. Uh, you can have uh, some committee which takes an uh, interview with the person. For example, hangout interview is perfect because uh, if, the, if you realize that on the other side of the wires there is a living person, not just some set of bytes which talks to you on IRC, it's harder to be rude to the guy because you can imagine always the face and you know he's a pretty cool guy, things like that. So basically, uh, being in a community is not like in the company. In company, there is HR to protect you. In community, it is us who must protect each other. You also can improve the communication skills of the people. Because mostly, <coughs> quite a lot of IT guys are introverts. Not everybody, they are extroverts too. But if you help to improve the interproject communication, even externally the communication, it helps the people to realize that they are funny people on the other side too and they can have fun with them instead of being rude to them. So you can set up fancy conferences like we have here so we can meet each other, get some beers, have fun, or do the regular meetings uh, where people can hang out. For example, the local Linux organizations usually offer some Linux, I don't know, in Prague we have a Linux pub and for example, Django coffee they do. So these guys always go somewhere together, drink the coffee or go to the pub for the dinner and for the beer and chat together about the issues. And it's really hard to be rude on such people if you ha are having fun with them. So since we don't have any HR, what are our options? We can create some project which handles the community PR relationship, or if we are company-based, for example, some projects uh, like upstream smart distributions can have a, a real HR you know, assigned to the process. For example, if you have, a, I don't know, imagine MyS MySQL is uh, some tiny project, and not tiny, medium size, and they assigned HR, which check in line 
everybody in the project. So if any of the paid employees or the community contributors start insulting somebody, they have to deal with the HR and they pose a risk that A, the employees can lose the job because they are not behaving well and damaging the company picture, which is quite often normal. Or you can lose the credit and commit access for that what you did in that project as a contributor because they will just strip you of your rights and everything. And just even they can write a public relationship poster that he did this and this and this because of this we decided we don't want him anymore. Which is pretty rough if that happens to somebody. So the public, this is not usually PR, but silently you will just lose the permissions. Also, so how to handle a community relationship? You have uh, to have some team where everybody can complain. Whether it's long-term contributor, newbie, employee, if it's the company project, everybody should have one point of contact where to complain when something happens. The reaction for bad behavior must be, must be fast and also just. It doesn't mean that in first day, when somebody insults somebody, you just came to the in guy who was rude and told him, okay, we don't want you anymore, see you in a few years, bye-bye, no commit access. That's not exactly just for saying one bad word to somebody. On the other hand, if you spend two months chatting with other team members about, well, he does these contributions, he is really valuable, should we keep him? No, maybe. What about we do this and this? And then after two months, you try to say, okay, we decided this. It's completely useless. Such projects have no use at all in open source world. Because at that time, the person who was insulted is already gone from your project. Or doesn't care if they went over it. Because honestly, were you angry for 60 days? Anyone on about anything? I see no raised hands, so I suppose nobody can be angry for that long because it's pretty unhealthy. Okay. So, also you have to keep your standards. When you set up uh, some code of conduct or ethical code, I've seen, for example, we have a nice code of conduct here on the conference, how we should behave, what we should do, what we shouldn't. It pretty much sets the maintenance in for a behavior which we can behave, uh, how we can act. If you don't have this, basically people can invent this on the fly. So if you want to punish somebody later on, they can just say, okay, but you never wrote that this is a bad behavior, and they would be right. Without code of conduct or any ethic code or whatsoever, they can always tell it's your fault for not saying this is bad. And you should also require the same set of behavioral standards from everybody. It doesn't matter if it's a, the new guy, as I always say, or some core kernel hacker. It's simply the same, always the same. Everybody, the same meter. Doesn't matter what he does, how he does it. Usually replacing one, even a great developer, needs, for example, three average. But still, you can't get such people. If your project is healthy and people are joining, you can basically replace everybody. But if people are not joining because of this, this guy, you can never ever replace him. Because basically he makes himself, uh, how it's the English word, he makes himself not unreplaceable but basically needed all the time. Unique, not unique. Undisposable, yeah. Maybe. Oh, no matter. So, uh, now I plan to do, uh, show you a reading book, and then we will have a discussion about what are your suggestions if you ever met such a behavior and things like that. So, for the reading, there is a really nice book from this Robert Sutton, and I really recommend everybody who wants to figure out how to deal with assholes or annoying persons what to do. So there is uh, lots of statistics. There are even data for the measurement I showed before. Uh, this, no, no, yeah, this one. So 
This one is expanded. There are data, data information about how, where it was obtained, how it was correlated, things like that. So you can actually figure out the statistics. And basically, that's it. So let's start the discussion. So any of you guys ever witnessed some bad behavior towards you in some open source project directly towards you? when somebody was insulting you or something like that. Come on, don't lie, tell me the truth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it seems like half a room witnessed this behavior directly. So, now for the even better part. Who witnessed such behavior? Not directly to him, but witnessed. Okay, we can say it's almost everyone. Good. So this means this project is really global wide and everybody is facing it. Uh, did you ever wonder if uh, it would be better if your project had something like the uh, community relationship project? Missy, do you think it would help? Yeah, and did it work in your case? Yes. Yes. So, okay, let's try the question like this. Uh, who seen the uh, community relationship project uh, in his case, or in case of somebody else, and it worked, actually. So we have one, two guys. Okay, so 80% um, of this uh, room raised, okay, one more question. And who seen this community relationship project and seen it failed? Okay, one guy. Okay, so it's 50-50-50. So once it worked, once it didn't, okay. So that means that in this room, 80% of guys witnessed this bad behavior. And actually, in only 50%, thank you here for ruining my statistics, uh, <laughs> uh, in, only in 50% the community relationship project helped. Uh, in the book I showed, uh, they did it on uh, much more people, and they reached a consensus like in 80% of the occurrences, this helps. The community relationship project actually helps. The problem is when your community project, fall, uh, community relationship project falls apart. If that happens, of course, it's not working. This is what we had probably with Theo, I guess. Aha, so if there is a conflict between a guy that's a developer, and with the member of the team that is supposed to handle these issues, yeah, in that case, might be even better if such a guy was maybe removed from the project, not from the complete project, but from the development relations project, because that team has to be have to have higher standards in your project, because they ha have to be always polite, always just, and it's pretty hard. <laughs> that's pretty hard to achieve such a goal. So, okay, so uh, any ideas? Uh, what would you like to ask for this? Given everything you said, what's your opinion of the general language? Oh, I really feared that somebody will ask because this mail was sent really recently. <laughs> Okay, oh, say, please ask again. So. Sorry, um, given everything you've said, what's your opinion of the Linux kernel mailing list, especially a certain Mr. Torvalds and his way of dealing with people? Okay, so let me start again. I was really scared that somebody will ask this because I seen the mails uh, two days ago and I was like, oh boy, somebody will ask this because I'm having this presentation. So uh, the problem is that Linux has high standards on the code quality and he gets so many patches, patch flow info for him, that he can't afford to be polite and kind. Because if you imagine that you get, I don't know, last time uh, Greg showed his mails, it was like 5,000 per day, or something that he reads. I get like 16,000, but mostly mailing list, ignore, 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 doesn't matter. But if you read 5,000 mails, it's like, eh, next, 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 okay, bronk, broken. and with this kind of pressure on you, you can't be kind because you need the people to behave 
to you, like, kindly. But, yeah, being rude is never helpful, but in this case, uh, you would have to increase the developers of kernel so much, it's not possible to replace him by somebody else. So basically, yeah, he could, he could behave more politely, that's always possible, at least a bit. But what I've seen in the thread, uh, the sender of the first mail was also not exactly nice in the following ones. So, yeah, they were uh, they were both then moving into some bike shedding and flame bite. So it turned to nothing. It would be nice if they sat down and wrote some code of conduct, like don't expect any mails from us unless your code is perfect, or if you want to deal with us. Just expect us to be rude about quality of your work, because if you look, Linus never insults the person. He always focuses on insulting it uh, like, "You are crazy because this." Not "You are crazy." He just always pointed to the code where he finds that it's not up par. Okay, there is question. There are two questions actually, so fight for it. Fight for it. Let's show how we can operate. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> okay, they are having some. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I've been in a situation where uh, there were uh, two guys that had a conflict, and they had to be their middle guy because. Meditator. Yeah, so because both of them uh, had good relationship with me, so they wanted me to solve that uh, mm -hmm. situation. Uh, so my question is, uh, what, what, should, what should I do in your, uh, in your opinion uh, in such case, and how does it affect me and my work in uh, the future? It will, it will affect your work uh, quite a lot, because you will have to then to uh, deal with both. The perfect scenario is ending when the guys are no longer angry at each other, but they are angry at you for your decision because it was just. So it affects you. Being meditator is like being a member of such team, the community relations. So you, you need to actually think about whether it's worth for you to do it, rather than asking somebody from that project to do it. And if it is, maybe one of the guys is your friend, so you want to have this off the table or so. Well, then you have to spend some time dealing with both, trying to find some common grounds, so it affects you. If you are open source contributor, it affects you because instead of providing some community work, hacking, coding, whatever, you are being a judge. You are judging the two people, sorting them out. Take the mic. And how can I sort it out? Well, it depends case from the case. Don't expect me to judge for you to tell you that A is a disaster and B is a cool guy. I really don't know. It depends on what the conflict is about. And if it's not possible to convince one of the guys rather to do something else, for example, or try to approach it differently. I really don't know. It depends case by case. So uh, what's happening uh, when the leader of the project is actually the one that poisoning the uh, whole project. Okay, in that Pro case... I mean, uh, you have a project that yeah. evolves and this at a certain point the leader is the poisonous okay. person. That's what we call forks. It doesn't matter if the leader is a person or a company. Basically, if somebody acts as a asshole, you just fork. Yeah, but... In free software, forks are like a taboo, right? No, not really. Yeah. Actually, you can try to deal with the person. It's the always the better the to try to convince him that he's doing mistakes. But if there is no other chance, what else do you have? You want to be part of the project that's evil on its contributors, ugly no. for everybody? Focusing my question, uh, it was actually, can a project actually uh, demo uh, throw away his leader. <coughs> uh, it depends on the structure of the project. Some can, some can't. But 
I mean, what's 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 your opinion? Uh, I'll make it more general. What's your opinion in uh, Libre Office uh, and Open Office situation? Uh, I can't tell you that. You can't tell me. Because I would be expressing the SUSE opinion. Because oh. I'm here standing for SUSE, so I. No, no, I'm taking. I can give you the, my personal opinion. Yes, your I'm, not I'm sure talking about your personal. Opinion. In this talk. Okay, in my personal opinion, it's just a technical dif difference. Basically, LibreOffice is merging everything anybody con contributes, and it was created first. And then suddenly, Apache OpenOffice was created. I ag agree those guys are doing a good job. Their patches are nice. They are merged back to LibreOffice. Actually, I was checking one three days ago. So yeah, they are doing a good work as a developers. But overall, I don't see a point in having two office suites. So they should try to get some common ground and agree on something. But if uh, IBM wants uh, their own office suite with Apache license, well, it's a company, so they can have the resources to run it. It's ju then just who gets more users win. And on Linux, LibreOffice won. Because I don't, I am not aware of any distribution that provides open office nowadays. Maybe Oracle Unbreakable Linux, but I don't know. You can try to ask the guy from Oracle that's sitting on the booth. But as you asked for the removing the leader, I think the projects when they are set up, the larger ones, not one man show, uh, if they should set up the constitution somehow to be able to overthrow their leader if he does insane stuff. I know it's rough to the leader. I mean, I've, I've heard uh, stories about in Latin those, those days, uh, the, the past year. Uh, I, I heard uh, stories about in Latin how people actually want to make it reach 1.0 and the, the guy doesn't leave them to do that. I'm not sure if I heard the right story or how the story was, but it's... Yeah, there, there are insults on... Actually, I've seen that uh, fanboys of... Usually fanboys of both fractions insult each other under every new item for such a project. It doesn't have to be library office versus open office. It used to be. Nowadays it's not so often GNOME versus KDE. It's it's actually, now it's funny, but it used to be more rough. If you check the old discussions from 2001, 2002, it was really uglier. Or lab, Libuff, FFmpeg, everything where there is fork, there suddenly pops up fanboys for both sides. In a corporate world, you can call it Fati, uh, Ati versus NVIDIA. So, fanatics on both sides insulting, my graphic card has three more FPS than yours, and your life choices are disgrace to the face of earth and things like that. It's not limited to hardware forums, it's in open source world too. So, anyone else, anything? Okay, so I suppose I should uh, go with EndNote and we at Suzy we are looking for new colleagues. So anybody who likes to work from Nuremberg, work from Prague, or even if you are smart enough to work from home, just open this URL or in point two, or write a mail directly to the point three if you seen the careers or already know what, you, what your strong points are. I still don't get why we got the QR code for the presentations, but that's the decision. Oh. Here I had the questions. My bad. So, thank you for your attention, guys.